36-year-old Michael Glover lived in Macon, Georgia in 2004. He was a pastor and was well known in the community. On March 29th, he was fatally shot in the carport of his West Macon home. People in the community were shocked as he was so beloved. Investigators collected DNA from the suspect at the crime and stored it to be used later. For Michael's family, it was a long wait. His father, Willie Glover, described Michael as special and unique and would give the shirt off his back to help anyone. We were a close-knit family. We got together and he was missing. Finally, in 2021, his family would receive some good news. In March of 2021, 39-year-old Terrence Dean of Macon was arrested. It was discovered that his DNA matched the DNA found at the crime scene back in 2004 as well as DNA found on an assault case. Investigator Malcolm Bryant with the Bibb County Sheriff's Office had this to say. The investigators that started the case, they did a good job in regards to including the small details which was very important. Taking that into consideration, I felt that there was a great chance that this case would lead to an arrest. Technology is nowhere near where it was back in 2004, which is a great thing for us. I think that is the direction that law enforcement is taking in general towards the technology area. He believes they will be able to solve many more cases in the near future. Terrence Dean is currently being held without bond at this time. The motive has not been made public. Faith Hedgenpeth was born on September 26, 1992 in Warren County, North Carolina. She is a member of the Holly Wasaponi Native American tribe. In high school, Faith was an honor student, a cheerleader, and a member of many extracurricular clubs and organizations. She did so well that she earned the Gates Millennium Scholarship to attend University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. By 2012, she was an undergraduate student in her third year at the university. Faith lived in an off-campus apartment with her friend Karina Rosario and Karina's boyfriend, Eric Takoy Jones. The relationship between Karina and Eric soured and he had to move out. He abused Karina, and when he tried to break into the apartment, Faith and Karina went to court to get a protective order that required Eric to stay away from them. Eric really hated Faith, because he believed she is the reason that his relationship with Karina did not work out. At one point, he called Faith and threatened to take her life. Just after midnight on September 7, 2012, Faith and Karina left their apartment to go to a nightclub in downtown Chapel Hill called The Thrill. Just after 2 a.m., the pair left the club and headed home. This is the last time Faith would be seen alive. By 3 a.m., Faith and Karina had returned to their apartment. A woman living below them was awake and watching TV and said she heard thumping noises. She described it as being similar to a heavy bag being dropped or furniture being overturned. Around this time, Faith's Facebook account was accessed. At 3.40 a.m., a text was sent from Faith's phone to that of Brandon Edwards, a former boyfriend of hers. She asked him to come over, but he did not respond. Karina's phone records showed that she was also trying to call Brandon around the same time. When Brandon did not answer, Karina called a fellow University of North Carolina Chapel Hill student, Jordan McRae. At 4.25 a.m., she left the apartment to get in Jordan's car. She left the apartment door unlocked. Six hours later, at 10.30 a.m., Karina tried to call Faith, but she did not get an answer. Karina then called another friend, Marisol Rangel, who gave her a ride back to Faith in Karina's apartment. At the apartment in Faith's bedroom, Karina and Marisol made a startling discovery. They found Faith's body wrapped in a quilt. She had been beaten. They then called 911 to inform the police. Dara 911, where is your emergency? Hi, um, I just walked into my apartment and my friend just like to be unconscious. Okay, what's your address, ma'am? I live at Hawkeye at the view. Um, give me give me the address. I just I just moved here, I'm about to get it. Oh my god. It's um I 639 Old Chapel Hill Road in Durham. Okay, repeat it to me. So, repeat it to me so I make sure I've got it correct. Okay. 5639 Old Chapel Hill Road. It's a okay, what's 1602. 1602? 
Yes. What's the phone number you're calling from? 201-321-8075. Okay, you say your friend is unconscious? He's unconscious. I just walked in the apartment and there looks like there's blood okay, everywhere. Listen to, okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Somebody's already sure. sending me ambulance. Okay, I need to get some information from you, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna tell you how to help her. Okay. 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 How how old is your How old is she? She's nineteen. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't okay. want to touch her, but listen to me. Is is she breathing? I don't know. <laughs> you need to check and see. Is she breathing? She. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, listen to me. There's blood everywhere. There's what? There's blood everywhere. Okay. I don't know what happened. Okay, is she on her back or is she on her laying on her stomach? She's on, she's on her back, but like she, I think she fell off the bed because she's like off the bed. <laughs> There's blood all over the pillows, like in the comforter. I just don't know what happened. Um, okay. All right, listen to me, all right? Is someone coming? Please. Yes, I've got somebody coming. I've got somebody coming. I need for you to help her. I need for you to go up to her. We need to see if she's breathing or not. Okay? I don't think so. Okay. Listen to me. Go up. The paramedics are on their way. I want you to stay on the line. I'm going to tell you what to do next, all right? Are you right by her now? Yes. Okay. Listen carefully. Listen. She's not moving. Okay. No. Can, will you touch her arm? Tell me, does she, how does she feel? She's not moving. Okay, ma'am. We need to find out if we can help her or not. You've got to, you know, do as I'm asking so we can help her. All right? Okay. Okay. If you can, lay her flat on her back. Remove any pillow. Lay her flat on her back? Flat on her back. Remove any pillow. Okay. Okay. Kneel next to her. Look in her mouth for food or vomit. Blood everywhere. Okay, kneel next to her and look in her mouth for she's food or vomit. Blood. So Tell me something. Sorry. Listen to me. Listen to What is your name? I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. It's okay, honey. It's okay, honey. Everywhere. Listen to me. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Listen to me. When you touch her, how does she feel? Does she feel what? warm? No, she feels cold. She feels cold? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Don't touch anything else, okay? Don't it's touch so anything else. Hurry. Okay. They're on their way. I've got police on the way to you, and I've got, a, got medics on the way. Okay? Okay. What room is she in? She's in my bedroom. Okay. I want you to go back into the living room, okay? You I need don't to go know in. what's going on. Like, okay, there's listen, there's listen to in me. in my room that, like, was not here before. Okay, it listen like to someone me. someone that came in here. Okay, okay. It really does. All right, what, what did like you say your name was again? Here because okay, I don't... Understand. Okay, listen to me. Do, don't touch anything else in the room. I'm not I want you to leave, leave that room and go into the living room. You need to make sure make sure the door is unlocked so somebody can get in, so that the medics and the police can get in when they get there. Okay? Yes, of course. It's unlocked. Okay. Now yeah, tell me again. Get here, though. Okay, they're on their way, honey. They're coming as fast yeah. as they can. You just stay on the phone with me, all right? Yeah. Okay. Tell me again what your name is. It looks like someone had been in there because she's okay. not like this at I don't know what she's doing. Okay, okay. I've let them know. We've got everybody on the way to help you. Now, tell me again what your name is. What? What is your name? Karina Rosario. Karina? Yes. 
Okay, Karina. You just you sit down on the couch and don't touch anything, okay? You just sit down. I'm not touching anything. Okay, okay. I just want you to sit down because the, the police and the medics are going to be there. Just They're coming just okay. as fast as they can, all right? Okay. You just you just stay on the phone with me. Okay. okay. You just stay on the phone with me. Are you sure there's something? Yes, ma'am. They are on their way. I just can't believe this. No, someone had to have been in there. Okay. We've got we've got first responders on the way. There's a fire truck coming. There's a medic coming, and the sheriff's department's on the way to you. Okay. okay. You just stay on the phone with me until somebody gets there with you. Okay. All right? Okay. Okay, Karina. How old are you, Karina? I'm 20. You're 20? Okay, hon. You're doing all right. You're doing all right. You just stay on the I phone with me. I see the police. You see the police? Yes. Okay. You let me know when they get in there with you, and then you can talk to them, all right? I just don't want you to be alone right now. Okay. Okay. You just stay on the phone with me. Okay. Are they in there with you? Are they coming in? Yes. Thank you. Okay, honey. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. An autopsy revealed that Faith suffered blunt force trauma to the head. She was just 19 years old. At the crime scene, investigators were able to collect male DNA and use it to develop a DNA profile. Karina's ex-boyfriend and Faith's ex-roommate, Eric Jones, soon became a very strong suspect. Investigators learned of his history of domestic violence and his threats against Faith. It was also revealed that just before the crime, he sent a text to an acquaintance asking for forgiveness for what I am about to do. After the crime, he changed the banner on his Facebook page to read, Dear Lord, forgive me for all my sins and the sins I may commit today. Protect me from the girls who don't deserve me. Investigators requested a DNA sample from Eric. After some resistance, he complied. Shockingly, his DNA did not match the sample from the apartment and he was ruled out a suspect. Among the evidence of the crime scene was a note written in ballpoint pen on a white paper bag. It is believed that the person who took Faith's life wrote the note. A friend of Faith shared with police a long conversation when Faith pocket dialed a friend on the night she lost her life. In 2016, Parabon Nanolabs created an image of what the suspect looked like using his DNA. Based on his DNA, Parabon was also able to say that most of his genetic markers indicated that he has Mexican, Colombian, and Iberian ancestry. On September 16, 2021, the Chapel Hill Police Department arrested 28-year-old Miguel Seguero Oliveras in connection to the case. He lives in Durham, North Carolina, close to where Faith lived. In August of 2021, Miguel had been arrested for drunk driving in Wake County. His DNA was taken, and it was then that the investigators noticed that his DNA matched the male DNA sample found at the crime scene back in 2012. During the police press conference, Faith's mother Connie Hedgenbath said she cried tears of joy after learning about the arrest. When I got the news this morning, I didn't do anything but cry and thank God and praise God because I put it in his hands and it was his timing. I don't know why it took so long, but I just know that it was him. Miguel is currently being held without bond at Durham County Detention Center. Investigators have not released a lot of information about him yet. We do not know if he and Faith knew each other. Faith was just 19 years old. She would have been the first one in her family to graduate from college. She had aspirations to be a teacher or a pediatrician so that she could help others, but sadly, she never got to achieve those dreams.